Okay, so the last time I've shown you how to create a gauge using the 16 by 2 character display and the Arduino Uno, today I will show you how to display the real data. And the best part is, we will not use any special tools because Windows has already tools how to do that. So I will show you how to display the CPU usage as well as the remaining battery life, but you can use the very same technique to display pretty much any information that is available for your PC. One thing to note before we start, I'm using the OLED version of the 16 by 2 display today, and it's great because it has very wide viewing angles and it's sunlight readable. I really like this display a lot. Same as the last time, I'm using the iSquare C version of the display, so you only need four wires to connect it to Arduino. So let's get started. So there are multiple different ways how to talk between the Arduino and the PC, and probably the easiest one is to use the Serly communication. So let's just start the Arduino IDE, make sure that the right communication board is selected and the right board is selected, in my case it's Arduino Uno, and just upload the simplest possible default sketch to Arduino. And this sketch really does nothing except for having the infinite loop, but it's a great start. So once this sketch is running, we can try the serial communication by clicking the serial monitor on the top right corner of the Arduino, and we can just try to send some data. And you might be thinking nothing is happening, but Arduino is already receiving the data, and that is signalized by the blinking TX LED on the Arduino board, and if I send the long string, it will obviously blink for a longer time, so it's doing something, and it's saving those characters into the Arduino buffer, so it's up to us to use the buffer and do something with the data. For that we need to first start the serial communication in the setup function. So inside the setup function we will say the serial begin and the only required parameter is the speed and the 9600 is the usual speed so we can go with that one and just to make sure that everything works as expected we can try to print something so we can say serial print line and in here we can maybe say hello world and just to make sure that we are not flooded with messages, we can wait a little bit, so we'll say delay 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. If we run this sketch on the Arduino, you can see that something is happening, because the RX LED on the Arduino board is blinking, and it's blinking every one second, because every second we are sending this hello world message, so if I open the serial monitor, you will see that it prints out hello world every second. So the sending is working as expected, but we are still not receiving anything into the Arduino board. I've already told you that if you send some serial data to Arduino, it will be stored in some kind of internal memory, in some kind of buffer, and we can find out if there is some data in the buffer by calling the serial available function, and that will give us the number of bytes that are currently being stored in the buffer, and it also says this is the data that's already arrived and stored in the buffer, which holds 64 bytes. So we just need to make sure that we read the data before it reaches 64 bytes, because once it reaches the 64 bytes, you will lose the data. And there's some example down here which is very simple, it just opens the serial port, and it looks for the serial available, if it's bigger than zero, it it reads the incoming byte with the serial read command and then prints it back, which is nice, but we don't really want to read every single byte. We are looking only for numbers, only for integers, so we will use the serial parse integer function that will look into the incoming data from the serial buffer and only try to find the integers. So we will combine the serial available with the serial parse integer in our code. So I will just copy the if serial available is bigger than zero into my code. So in here, maybe I can just comment this out for now. I will try to parse the integer, so I'll call serial parse integer, and this will give me the integer number, so I'll create a new integer value that I will call parse integer from serial, and I will simply say that the parsed integer from serial equals the serial parse integer. So once I get the integer number, I want to print it out, so I will call serial print line, but instead of printing hello world, I will print the content of the parsed integer from serial like so. So let's just upload this to Arduino and see what happens. So once this sketch is uploaded to Arduino, we can try to send some data. So I'll open the serial monitor, and we can try to send, for example, hello world, and you will see that it will return a zero. And the zero means, if I look at the documentation, the zero means that if no valid digits are read, it will return zero. So let's try to send some real data. So if I send one, it should return one. If I send thousand, it will return thousand. If I say one, two, three, it will return two, but it will also return zero because it is for the word three, which wasn't recognized as integer. So that is something to be aware, and that is that the zero might need that I will send the zero using the serial port, but it also means that there might be some data which are not recognized as integers, and it will result in the zero as well. In my case, it's perfectly fine because I'm trying. I will try to read the better status and the CPU load, which will most likely be above zero. But if you are trying to send zero as a data, that might be a problem, just something to keep in mind. Let's merge what we just created with our previous project, which is this one, a 16 by 2 character display being filled with the smooth gauge, and for this I'm using the walkway, which is free online Arduino emulator. As a first step I will set the serial begin inside the setup function, so I'll find the setup function in this sketch and just paste it in here. 
like so. Make sure that our integer is defined as well, for example, here. And finally, I will paste this piece, which is looking for the serial input and then prints out the data. And I will put this all the way down in here like so. For now, I don't want any of the previous graphics to be displayed. So I'll comment out the drawing of the gauge. And instead of printing the value to the serial input, I'll just comment it out. I will print it on the LCD itself. So first I will call LCD clear to clear the display and I will call LCD print. And of course I will print the parsed integer from serial value like so. I probably don't need to do that, but I will set the cursor to zero, zero position just to make sure. And what I will also do is I will copy the same stuff in the setup function, but in here I will change the message to, for example, be initialized just to make sure that everything works as expected. Now, if I run this sketch, you will notice that it's impossible to actually insert any or send any number because there isn't any input field. And if you open the walkway documentation, you will see that it says the serial monitor will only appear once you print something from your program first. So let's just do that. I will jump into the setup function of our sketch and say serial print line, for example, serial initialized. And once I restart the sketch, you will see that this small window on the bottom of the screen appeared so this is the serial output and we also have the this line which is a serial input and that is where we can input data and send it to arduino so let's just input some data if i type in one and press the enter key i should see one on the display if i type in 100 i should see 100 if i type in hello 10 i should see 10 but you will also notice that anytime i print something after a while the zero appears and that's because if you print out 100 you are not only sending 100 but you are also sending the line ending and it's nicely visible in the arduino ide so if i open the serial monitor in here I can select what should be the line ending and I can select to be no line ending, new line, carriage return or both at the same time. I don't have the choice in here in Walkway, but I can imagine that other applications will also send some kind of line ending. So what I can do is I can just ignore zeros for now. So once I get the parsed integer from serial, I can say that if the parsed integer from serial is not equal to zero, only then I will print out the value. So let's restart the simulation and now the zero shouldn't appear. So if I type in 100, it should stay at 100. If I type in hello to something, it should only show me two. So that's working as expected, which is great. Let's tweak the code to show the gauge, but with the new value. So what I will do is I will uncomment drawing the gauge. And for drawing the gauge, we are using the value of the CPU gauge, which we are increasing in this loop. So we don't want to do that. So I'll comment it out. No increasing for the CPU gauge, but instead I will set the CPU gauge to be parsed integer from serial. So I'll say that the CPU gauge is equals parsed integer from serial like so and I can get rid of those lines like so. So if I restart the emulator what I should see is an empty gauge and if I enter any value like 20 the gauge should jump to that value so 50 should be fine or 100 as well. The only problem is I cannot go all the way down to zero because it is being ignored so the smallest possible value will be one percent but I guess that's fine for the CPU gauge. You can see there is a letter D in here and that's because in the beginning we are drawing the text initialized and then we are not clearing the display but overwriting the display so what we can do is we can just print empty character after displaying this last byte so I will just say print and empty character and if I restart this it should be fine which it is okay so everything works nicely in the emulator let's try with the real Arduino I'm using a real term which is my favorite real terminal application just make sure that in the display settings you click the half duplex so we can see what we are typing and then jump to the port settings and select the right port in my case that's port number seven the speed should be set to 9600 because it is the speed that we've defined in the Arduino sketch. Other settings should be left to default, so parity none, data bits 8 and stop with 1. I will click the open or actually unclick the open and click the open to establish a connection with Arduino. And you can see it says serial initialized, which is uh, we have a communication with Arduino. And then I can start typing numbers. So if I type in 50, I should see the gauge filling 50 on the Arduino, same with 40 or maybe 20 and so on and so on so it works perfectly fine with this application but this is not the application that we will be using to send data to arduino it was more just for testing let's finish with 100 and jump to the next step and that is using windows command line so i will select run and type in cmd which is stands for command line let's talk about the basics of using the command line so one of the functions that you can use is the echo function so you can say echo hello world 
and it will pretty much print out the hello world inside the command line. What you can also do is use the bigger than or what looks like an arrow and basically redirect the output into, for example, the file. So if I set file txt, it will redirect the hello world text into this file. So if I open the folder, there should be a new file called file.txt and it contains the hello world. Now there is one more thing that you can do and that is instead of redirecting this into the file, you can actually redirect it using the serial communication outside of your PC. So I can say communication port number seven and that pretty much just sends the string hello world to communication part number seven. Now you can see it says access is denied and that's because I'm still using the real-time application. I'm still connected to the Arduino using the real-time application. So if I close this one and run this one again, now it should send the text hello world to communication port number seven, basically to Arduino. Now unlike the real-time application, you can see there are no settings for sending the string, but you can type in mode and then the communication port to find out what are the settings and maybe change it. You can see that in my case, the speed is right as well as the error settings but if that would not be the case i can type in mode com7 and specify new speed by saying bout equals 96 for stands for 9600 9, parity equals none which is the same data bits equals eight and stub bit equals one so that will pretty much set the very same thing as it was previously set now comes the fun part and it is sending the actual value to arduino so let's type in echo for example 50 and send it to communication port number seven now watch what happens if i press the enter key you will notice that, you know, actually there is no number 50 being displayed here, so something is wrong, and let's find out what is wrong. For that, I will be using the logic analyzer from Celia. This model has eight digital and analog inputs, but I will only be using a few of those, so I will only connect the cable with first four. Note that the black wires are the grounds. The Arduino Uno board that I have is using the CH340 chip for the serial communication, and a quick Google shows me an image with pinout, so pins 2 and 3 are the ones that I'm interested in right now. Those are the pins TX and RX, so transfer and receive. Let's start the logic to application that comes with the logic analyzer and we'll capture some data. As a first thing, open the device settings and select the digital line 0 and 1 and we can start the capture. Now obviously nothing is going on, both lines are pulled high, so I will open the command line utility and pretty much send the same thing, so echo 50 to communication port number 7 and you will notice something is on the channel 0. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see there is some data in here and what I can do is I can add the analyzer, so analyzers add a new one which will be async serial and it will be for the zero, digital zero. Everything else seems to be fine, so I'll click save, and you will notice that it really received 50. The number was received together with the quotation marks and with some extra space, but that shouldn't matter that much. I mean, it looks perfectly fine. So what if we do it one more time and maybe wait a little bit more? So let's start the capture again and send the very same data. So send the 50 to communication port number seven, and here it is. And if I wait a little bit, you will notice something is on the other line. So if I zoom in, there is again some kind of data. So I'll add again a async serial communication analyzer to the second channel. So async serial to D1. And you'll notice it says serial initialized. Now if I open the Arduino source, we've actually sent the serial initialized in the setup function of our program. And the setup function is only triggered when the Arduino is reset. So it tells me that the Arduino is reset and that's the reason why it doesn't see the 50 number because at some point it's getting reset. Now I already know that this has something to do with the DTR line which stands for data terminal ready. So I will connect another probe to pin number 13 and since I was seeing some glitches in my logic analyzer I will also connect the ground which is pin number 1. Finally just to make sure that I know what's going on I will connect one more probe to the reset pin of Arduino. Let's edit those channels inside the logic analyzer software and name those channels properly. So it will be TX, RX, DTR and reset. Start capturing the data and send our value of 50 one more time, like so. Let's zoom out a little bit to see what's going on and we can stop here. So as you can see, as usual, we are sending the value of 50, which triggers the DTR line to be low, which at the same time resets the Arduino. And this is quite intentional because that's the way how you upload a new sketch or new binary to Arduino. When you start the serial communication, the DTR line will go low, it will reset the Arduino, it will wait for a new sketch to appear or new sketch to be uploaded to the flash memory. If that doesn't happen, it will simply start the Arduino, which you can see in here. So in here, it sends whatever we've defined in the setup function. So you might be wondering why the real-time application was working. So let's find out. I will start the capture and run the real time application and notice as soon as I click the open button it will open the connection. It will pull the DTR line low, causes the Arduino to reset. But by the time I put in something in here and press the enter key, you can see that the Arduino is already up and running. So the difference is the connection is opened all the time and there is only one reset at the beginning. 
if I compare it to the command line, this command is actually doing three different things. So it first opens the connection, sends the data and closes the connection. So it restarts the Arduino every time you send the new data, which obviously will get lost because at the time it's being sent, the Arduino is being reset. Thankfully, there are at least three different ways how to fix this. The easiest way is to disable the DTR line. So if I type in mode COM7, it will tell me that the DTR is enabled. So I should be able to just type in mode COM7 DTR off, but you will notice that other settings are getting reset to default settings or different settings. So we can see that now the database is different and the parity is different. So we have to actually tell it all the different settings that you want to set, which means we have to set the baud rate, parity, data bit, stub bit, and then disable the DTR like so. So now everything should be fine. And if I send the same command, I should actually see the value 50 on the display. And when I zoom in the data, you will notice that there is actually only the TX line being triggered, sending the 50. There is nothing going on on the DTR line or the reset line. Now, if you want to get the real CPU usage, we can Google get CPU usage from Windows command line. And the first answer should be probably the right one. So I'll copy it and paste this one in my command line. And it gets some time, but uh, you can see that my usage right now is 1%. Maybe if I run this one more time, it will be higher. Yeah, you can see now it jumps to four or three. Showing this value on Arduino should be as simple as redirecting this to communication port number seven. So if I do so, you don't see anything in the command line, but Arduino should show this number now. Of course, sending the message this way is probably not the best way because you have to type it all the time. So what we can do instead is to create a simple batch file. And the content of this pitch file is pretty straightforward. So first I set the mode for communication port number seven. I set the right speed, parity, data, stub bit, and make sure that the DTR is off. Then I create the loop. And in this loop, I just get the CPU usage and redirect this to communication port number seven. I wait two seconds and then I go back to the loop. So it pretty much results in an infill loop, sending the CPU usage to Arduino and then waiting two seconds. And here it is the batch file running. Please note that I have started few applications on my PC to make sure that the CPU load is a little bit bigger than usual. Let's talk about the drawbacks of this method. And I think that the biggest one is the fact that the COM number might be and will be changing. So once you disconnect Arduino and maybe connect other devices, the number will be different. So you'll have to manually change it in the batch file. The vmic command could be used to get quite a lot of interesting details from your PC. For example, the barrier status. And for that, you will use something like this. And as a last thing, let me show you how to change the gauge to be in the shape of the battery. So this is the walkway project. I will start by changing the CPU to actually say battery. But if I restart a simulation, something is wrong. And the something is, of course, the size of the CPU gauge buffer, which is set to 10, which is not enough to hold all the characters. So I will change it to maybe 16 and that should fix this. As for the gauge shape, I want to change the right side of the gauge to be kind of like in the battery shape. So I'll open the custom gauge generator and create a new right part of the gauge something like this. And we are also using the mask to mask whatever we want, don't want to display. So I'll create a mask in the similar manner. So the first thing will be the right part of the gauge. So I'll replace the right part of the gauge. The second cliff is the mask. And if I restart the simulation, I should see the right tip being properly drawn. I probably don't want to see the rounded corners on the left side. So I'll replace this with all ones. So gauge last left should be all ones like so. And that's pretty much it. Now I can enter some number and set the better gauge value. And here is the final sketch running or the Arduino. If you have any comments or questions, please put those down in the comment section below the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Thanks and bye.